What happens when our history finally makes it on the page? There's something missing that our schools just don't say. So maybe it's time that we put our story right where it rightfully belongs. Let's learn some more about our friend Larry Idleon. Larry was an immigrant man He left the Philippines for the American dream And came here to study law At least that was his goal But then reality hit Couldn't afford the toll So he became a farm worker Working in Alaska, Washington, and in California He lost three fingers from working so hard He was called Seven Fingers from that point on ha. But before we get into what he did You gotta learn what a strike in a union is A union is an organized group of workers And a strike is when those workers protest their employers. So Larry got the Filipinos in the unions to stand up for fair wages and good working conditions. He started a strike and I'll tell you why it matters. So let's turn the page to the very first chapter. What happens when our history finally makes it on the page? There's something missing that the schools just don't say. So here we are telling the story of a man who knew right from Wrong. Let's learn some more about our friend Larry Ilion. Modesto was nicknamed Larry by his dad and his mom. He was born in the Philippines in Pangasinan. Since he was little, wanted to go to America. A briefcase, nice suit, and beautiful fedora. He turned 15 and made his dreams come true. He didn't have his dad's permission, but he still went through. Gambled all his savings for a ship that left Manila with only $50. He dreamt of becoming a lawyer. Arrived in Seattle, met the other Filipinos. They all gave Gave up their dreams to survive, so now he knows realities are coming to the country of your dreams. It was definitely harder than it seemed. So he became a farm worker all over the states. He noticed that Filipinos were not getting fairly paid. He joined his fellow farm workers to fight for what was right. Let's fast forward to the Delano Grape Strike. What happens when this grape strike finally makes it on the page? Larry is missing from the history stage. So maybe it's time that we put his story right where it rightfully belongs Let's learn about the legacy of Larry Idion So when Larry was in Stockton, he learned about AWOC A union Larry helped recruit for in the Central Valley He met Dolores Huerta and Cesar Chavez Who worked with Mexicans and Delano, also dealing with low wages Larry's friend Ben said, we have to go on strike Larry agreed, but it didn't happen overnight All of the Filipinos gathered in Philippines Hall. They needed all of their support, not from one, but from all. The legend's true. All Larry had to say was, I want those in favor to stand up with your hand raised. The crowd is silent. Will they take a stand? After a moment, everybody raise a right hand. This is what they waited for. So with all their might, over 2,000 members were going on strike. Farmers left the fields and the growers were mad They beat them up, shut the power off, yo, it was bad Larry knew they needed solidarity With the Mexicans and Cesar Chavez Unity, if they worked together, they could win the strike Cesar Chavez said yes, and for the first time Mexicans and Filipinos went even further To join two unions that united farm workers They traveled up and down California Telling all the stores to stop carrying grapes from Delano This lasted five years, it was hard And in 1970, the growers finally gave in to the demands justice prevailed and Larry led the way and that's why we have Larry Italy on day what happens when our Larry finally makes it on the page it's something missing that the schools just don't say so maybe it's time that we tell a story through more than just this song let's celebrate our friend and modern Larry Ilion Gail, why does telling history and stories like this matter? To see people of color and specifically Filipino Americans part of solutions, part of actually changing physically, historically, emotionally, 
the state of California, in turn, the rest of the United States by fighting for fighting for farm worker rights. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine when this happened in 1965, there were, there were no, nothing for these farm workers. They just decided to go on strike. And, and so to see us in that light that we, that, that people of color can, so can see each other and ourselves in these children's books, in, in the media, to see this being told in a very accessible way to students is, is huge. My, my heart is open. Uh, it, it is so happy. And I remember being 12 and 13 years old, being hungry for some Asian American story or um, some representation in the media and being so proud that people in my local community are carrying on our stories and our narratives. And our school is over 90% students of color. And so we identify in so many ways. And um, I try to share as much counter narratives as I can. I try to share as much um, Black, Indigenous, people of color narratives that I can because our stories are valid and they matter. Just every time I feel representation, whether it's LGBTQ or being Filipino American, there's like this feeling in my chest and it tingles and it feels valid and it's just joy that radiates from inside. And I hope that my students feel that way too. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's what art can do for all of us. Yeah. Art is is truly powerful. I'm like <laughs> getting emotional too. My dad was very humble person. Um, you know, um, of course he, you know, he would be very excited to know that an elementary school was actually named after him, music videos, books, and all of that, you know, would all come second to his work, you know, but he 